Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, obviously. I'm working on a 2004 Mazda Speed Miata today. And uh, it's a prep for sale detail. And I'll get you guys some more sale information soon. But uh, just trying to get rid of it. I'm going to try to minimize those scratches right there on the bumper. The garage door got to it, obviously. Uh, I've been working on the interior already. Got to get all this nasty crap out of it that can be uh top and that kind of thing you see the uh dash is all dusty no worries get her all straightened out you see how the hood is all oxidized so i'm just going to do a uh just an all-in-one polish type deal we we'll use infinite finish and then uh throw some juice boost on it shine her up and a whole lot i can do with these wheels i'm going to get those cleaned and looking better get those tires cleaned and dressed but uh i think most of the time is going to be spent cleaning up this engine bay apparently he left the uh the cap off the oil at some point and oil got everywhere but i'm going to get that straightened out as well we're just going to do a uh a top side engine bay detail and i'm going to clean all that grime off the underside of the hood as well so i'm going to get this thing straightened out those headlights cleaned up it's gonna be one of those I'm trying to do uh, good on time situations uh, so I won't be filming a lot of the work that I do per se but I'll come back periodically to show you guys what's up you can see the lack of gloss on the hood and try to get some clarity back get that oxidation off and it's the same on the front of the fenders and then the whole top side uh, he said both of the bumpers have been repainted which would explain why they look so much glossier and nice nicer than the rest so try to get some of these scuffs off all right so i'm not going to waste any more time here i'm just going to rock and roll all right so <clears throat> I got the interior all done. I didn't do a whole lot on the interior because it didn't need much. But I got everything wiped down with diluted infinite use detail juice, the door panels, the dash, and that kind of thing. Console, cup holders are clean. I also did a damp shampoo on that driver's seat and uh, got it vacuumed out really well. That's about all I'm doing on the interior. I'm working on this engine bay and getting all the oil and stuff off of the... Uh, underside of the the hood and getting the top side looking awesome on this engine bay situation it's coming along pretty well uh i got everything degreased actually what i did was i hit it with tiger's blood first to let everything break down and then uh, i have this bucket of probably a gallon and a half of water using this black towel and this cheap chinese brush i use for my uh, lug nuts getting in the nooks and crannies when you are detailing a performance car for sale it's extremely important to make it look nice and clean in the engine bay um, the engine bay is most important on a sports car people are going to look at that they're going to look at uh, how well it's been kept they're going to make their decision on if it's been neglected or run hard they're going to look for oil leaks and that kind of thing and it's very important especially for the top side to be clean you want to make sure that your reservoirs look nice now i got that one almost back to white i got a little bit of nook and cranny work to do on that this one this this outside spot i got to wipe that down really well uh, that one's yellowing with age, but all the tops of everything need to look nice and clean your reservoirs need to be uh, grease free and look nice uh, Your intake valve covers that kind of thing needs to look nice um, Your framework everything on the top needs to be spick and span and looking awesome So that's what I'm doing. I'm also like I said, I got all the oil that has slung up on the under hood portion of the hood uh, all cleaned off i got to do another wipe down and then i'm going to go in and i'm going to get all of the pools of product and water out of there that i can 
And once it's all dry and wiped down, I'm gonna hit it with uh, transform dressing diluted 50-50. Um, I could dilute it more. Matter of fact, the interior dilution at 25% product to 75% water would be ideal. However, I only keep this 50-50 in my vehicle. I don't carry a couple different dilutions because if I'm doing an interior, I generally will use the uh, the straight up concentrate infinite use detail juice, which give you gives you a very similar look as transform dressing. It's just actually got more polymer in it, the juice does. So anyway, that's where I'm at. You On a performance car, if they hire you to prep it for sale, definitely make sure that the engine bay looks good. It's all about working with the, cu the customer and what their goals are and trying to combine what they want with how it's actually gonna sell. I mean, the paint's kind of important for prep for sale. Uh, the interiors, everything overall is important, but they need a return on their investment or they need it to make the car sell faster. So you need to do what you can to minimize their monetary output while still giving the car enough of what it needs to, to be beneficial. So anyway, that's where I'm at, working on the engine bay, got the interior done, then I'll be working on the paint and the wheels, and uh, you'll see more of that. All right, so I'm clay barring right now to remove the uh, contaminants that are bonded that won't come off in the wash, and I'm doing the uh, Gary Dean wash method, obviously. So I'm rinseless washing in the garage, which is amazing. And uh, got most of the car done, but I wanted to show you guys I've just done just the top back here, just a basic clay bar treatment with the uh, Japanese ultra fine clay bar that I sell on detailjuice.com. This stuff is amazing. And uh, it re really, really does a lot of heavy lifting as far as removing contaminants while not marring the paint at all. So you can always go straight to sealant after this. This is my favorite uh, clay bar situation. I do not use clay bar alternatives anymore. I used to, but I have found that this works way better. And realistically, um, I just prefer it. So anyway, you can see that this is heavily contaminated. Both sides were just from the uh, trunk lid right here. So anyway, my point is you always, always, always want to clay bar prior to any polishing that you do or any protection or you're going to be sealing in and polishing over all that nasty grime some of those chunks are larger than they should be and you potentially if you polish right after you wash and don't clay bar you're rubbing that grit into the paint creating more swirls and scratches uh, than you should have to deal with so anyway that's gross and that just is from that trunk lid. So remember, always, always, always clay bar before wax or sealant or coating or polishing. That's your tip for the day. So I'm gonna get back on this thing. That hood lacks a lot of clarity. See if I can get some of that back after the wash and clay. So here we go. So now I'm polishing. Got my Harbor Freight DA in the uh, green buff and shine heavy cutting low pro pad. Got my infinite cut, obviously, infinite finish right there. Um, this hood is rather oxidized. Notice there's no clarity at all. Uh, with infinite cut and the green low pro pad on speed five, I got a lot more clarity. I mean, that's obvious. See that light? Boom, a lot more clarity. Uh, because of the nature of this detail, that's where I'm gonna stop with it. Um, I could probably go farther, but I'm gonna opt out of going any farther because I got a lot more clarity and this matches the rest of the car. And since the plan is to just do a light polish and some protection, uh, so he can sell it. I'm going to limit what I do uh, while giving him the result that he was looking for.
Uh, looks pretty amazing. I also went ahead and hit that headlight. Notice green, greenish yellow nastiness. Still kind of a yellow hue, but it's uh, clear. So I got all that grime off the, the face of the headlight. I used the same combo. I literally just went over it while I was doing this lower section of, of the hood. But anyway, lots more clarity. I got all the oxidation off. Looks good, matches the rest of the car. And uh, I'm gonna keep on rocking and rolling with that. Looks good to me. Now, when I say do everything for the customer's expectation, that does not mean that you should not do anything more than what the customer expects. That, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go above and beyond. It, in fact, I'm telling you, do a little bit more every time than the customer expects, but focus on that expectation and just do a little bit more so that they see the, the true value in what it is that you're doing. It's important to do just a little bit more than they expect, but don't do things that are gonna, you know, be counterproductive or ruin the, uh, your schedule for the day. So I'm gonna finish polishing this thing up and then we'll, I'll do the final dressing and show you the finished product. All right, boys and girls, this 2004 Mazda Miata Mazda Speed MX-5 is complete. I can't stress enough what it means to do what the customer needs you to do but go a little bit farther than that and keep the budget and your time in mind when you do it. As you pay more and more attention to the videos that I produce on this channel, you'll start to understand more about what I'm talking about. And in three hours, I got this car done. My cost to do it, if I had to guesstimate right now with travel, use of my pads, polisher, wear and tear, product I used at retail price, I would say that I spent around $10 it cost me to do this job. And I did it with no more than what you see right there in the back of my truck. No more than that. I don't have a big van. I didn't, well, I did waste tons of money in the beginning on a trailer set up. I do most of my work at single customer homes. They always have water access at the house. If I'm working in a garage like this or even in their driveway, there's always an outlet by the door, always outlets in the, in the garage. I have never been in a position where my customer would not allow me to use their water and power. The only issue I've ever had with that was when I first got started, I was doing a lot of parking lot stuff, uh, doing some fleet vehicles, that kind of thing. On the lower end jobs, that's when it requires far more of you. If you focus on the price range and the stuff that I tell you to focus on, you will never need power and water uh, unless it's just not available where you take the job. Uh, in which case, a Honda EU2000i generator will run that rigid five horsepower shop vac and the Harbor Freight DA simultaneously, so you'll never need more power than that and you can bring a five gallon bucket for the Gary Dean wash method. That's really all I do, that's all I use. Um, I don't need all that big bulky stuff. The bottom line is, I got all of this done with what you see in the back of the truck and I did use the client's water. I probably used a total of three gallons of water, which most likely didn't change his bill one bit and I did use his power for the vacuum cleaner and the Harbor Freight DA. Notice that 
the paint is far glossier. There's no oxidation left on the paint. What I did was I cut the hood and the tops of the fenders and then the top edge of the door, the rear quarter, and then so all of the horizontal panels I cut twice with Infinite Cut, the green pad on the Harbor Freight DA. I also did this area up here around the windshield. I couldn't do anything with those mirrors. Those have to be repainted. So anyway, I cut those twice. Uh, and then I just went around the whole car with uh, Infinite Cut and the green pad. I, I mean, I, I didn't do, so I did two section passes at three passes per section pass on each section of the hood. So there were four of those sections. And then I did the same situation on all the horizontal panels to get all that oxidation off. But Infinite Cut was working so well at removing the oxidation and shining it up, I just went ahead with that. I didn't change pads, didn't change polish. Uh, and then after I was all done with that, I hit the whole car with Juice Boost, uh, direct to paint. I did fix the headlights. Just went over those while I was polishing the paint, nothing fancy with Infinite Cut. Those are all clear now. Got the wheels all cleaned up. Got the tires dressed with transform dressing. Sorry if it's a little dark, obviously I'm in the garage. And I didn't move the car to do any of this work with the Gary Dean wash method. It stayed in the garage the whole time. That is awesome. It's awesome for a winter wash. It's awesome for a summer wash, it doesn't matter. Uh, there was some bird shit on the uh, on the top. I got all that off. As I told you before and showed you, I vacuumed out the interior wheel really uh, well. I hit the interior windows with infinite use detail juice. I scrubbed down the door panels and all the plastics, the dash and everything with the infinite use detail juice diluted. I did damp shampoo the driver's seat bottom because it was kind of nasty. Uh, I hit the door jams, I vacuumed the trunk, got the trunk jam. Oh, this car has, I think he said 137,000 miles on it. Um, you probably remember there were a lot of scratches right here on the bumper. You'll also notice that they are gone now. Infinite Cut handled those. Looks amazing. The quarter here had a bunch of scuffs and stuff. I got all those out. And now for the engine bay. This engine bay looks amazing. So I scrubbed down the top of underneath of the hood. Got all the oil that was slung all over the place cleaned out. And then I cleaned off the stickers so that all the writing there, the text was legible. Um, I cleaned everything with Tiger's Blood. I used a little bit of Infinite Purpose Cleaner. Uh, scrubbed all the tops. What you want when you do this basic top side engine bay detail is to make sure that all the letters, any letters, uh, any stickers like this stuff, make sure all that's clean and legible. Make sure your reservoirs don't look like they've you know, been bathed in oil. Uh, I got the reservoirs nice and clean. This one's, you know, obviously yellowing because of age. That one looks a little bit nicer. Uh, maybe that one gets a little bit more heat. Who knows? Anyway, they're clean. The uh, brake fluid reservoir is all clean. Uh, master cylinder is all clean. I got everything on the top side, including down there on the shock towers and that kind of thing is all clean. I uh, stuck my fingers with the black microfiber towel in everywhere I could get to it. I used the brush on some stuff, just that small brush I showed you guys at the beginning. Nothing fancy. Um, the transform dressing that's just pulled up on the bottom will go away by itself. Uh, it'll dry up. It'll be fine. I'm not going to even worry about any of that. But everything looks awesome after uh, a light coat of transform dressing looks great. Uh, it looks nice and new. Uh, doesn't look all oily and gross. Transform dressing will soak in and hydrate everything, making the hoses and any wire casings and that kind of thing. Um, you know, a lot, the, it'll make the elasticity better so that they last longer. They're hydrated. But yeah, looks amazing. It is 
presentable now to sell this thing. So, I think he's looking for in the neighborhood of $8,000 if you guys are interested. And he's located in Tampa, Florida. I even hit that exhaust tip with some chrome cream real quick, nothing fancy. But yeah, good to go. If you guys have questions for me, my cell phone number is 813-846-4406. Uh, if you are a consumer looking for my detailing services, I'd be more than happy to help you with whatever you need. Uh, if you're an enthusiast and you're looking for uh, you know, some advice on how to get your car looking awesome, you wanna do it yourself, you wanna maybe talk to me about my products from detailjuice.com, uh, same phone number for all that stuff. Uh, if you're a detailer and you want to improve the way you do things, I am putting together a uh, training course uh, for this October uh, where you fly into Tampa. It'll be a weekend course. I'm going to focus on the business side of detailing and how to maximize uh, you know, the business. There will also be a, a, almost a full day of hands-on training, some tips and tricks on how, to, how I do things. But keep in mind, when I say follow my processes and my products my products that's obvious at detailjuice.com the processes is, is like i was trying to show you when i showed you the back of my truck and what i carry i do things as well or better i like to say better than most detailers do with far less equipment and fewer products you just don't need all that stuff you don't need a huge van you don't need um all that equipment, you don't need a pressure washer these days, you just don't. I mean, if you can swing air injection, and you should look that up, look at some of my videos on air injection, uh, that's a good way to compensate for not having a pressure washer and removing a lot of dirt and grime, de debris and, and sand before you go into a rinseless wash. My point is, you don't, you just, there's a big van full of equipment is not a, a necessity. I can get you going for far less uh, if you just listen to my advice, follow what I tell you, and roll with that. You, I will help you to become successful as a pro detailer or in doing things yourself to maximize efficiency and the end benefit. Now, I'm not cutting quarter, corners. I'm showing you how to do things the proper way, but I'm cutting out all the bullshit that you don't need. So check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my processes and my products and how I do things. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that take the time to listen to me babble on these videos. I hope you guys learn something every time you watch a video but if you don't and have a question or a request for a video that you'd like for me to shoot 813-846-4406 is the answer to the question thanks again have a great day